Sarika, I'm really excited to talk to you today because I've been working on this doc for the show uh, called The Secret World of Sound. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories in that doc is about this mystery that plagued the residents of the San Francisco Bay Area for, for years. Yeah, they were going nuts. Yeah. Night after night after night, the sound was going on. And they didn't, some people thought it was aliens. Like that's how, they were desperate for it to stop. And it was only until a scientist at a nearby university heard the sound yeah. and identified it that they knew what is, what is this? that the sound was not what from aliens this? or a submarine, but it came from a fish. But there's so much more to this fish. So today, I'm gonna tell Anthony why it's one of my all time favorite fish on earth. So, Anthony, we are here to talk about the plain fin midshipman. Plain fin midshipman. It's a terrible name. Yeah, I agree. tough to say. That's a bit of a tongue twister. It is, and there's a reason it's called that, which we will get to. I'm, <laughs> I'm obsessed dig in. with this fish. I'm obsessed with fish, period. But this one, I love it so much, I devoted an entire thesis to it. I know you live on the west coast of Canada. Were you hearing these fish when you were growing up? I never heard about this fish until I actually found one. Right. And there was this beach that I would go to my whole life for over 30 years. I went there every summer and I didn't know about this fish. I must have been hearing it at night. So this is really mind blowing. So now when you go back home and you hear that sound, do you recognize it now? You're like, oh. Definitely. Wow. But I don't think you would know unless you were listening for it. Could you give me like a, something like, what does it sound like? Absolutely. Um, and then you okay. come in and hum too. Hum. hum. Like a meditative kind of. Exactly. Okay. And this is what happens. One fish will start to sing, and then another one will come in, and another one, and then you have hundreds of these fish So like a singing, choir of like fish. Like a choir of fish humming. And it meditating. is so loud that it will actually resonate out of the ocean into the air, and you can hear it with your own ears. And this is the mating song of the plain fin midshipman. And for the so, females, it's irresistible. So that, <laughs> if it's a good song. So this <laughs> is an actual plain fin midshipman humming. Yeah, that sounds creepy. That's the sound I remember from the dock. Creepy? Weird, to me, it sounds like a, a horror film. Like, that's the sound you hear just before the guy comes out of the bushes. And Don't you find that relaxing? Like, you could just <laughs> no. kind of fall asleep? I imagine that if I'm on a houseboat and it's the middle of the night and I start hearing this, and everyone around me is like, I don't know what that is either, and it gets louder and louder, I might start getting freaked out. Okay, so I'm for me, that is like cool. a very meditative <laughs> sound. And that is not just one, but that's like probably many, even hundreds yeah. of fish singing at the same time, all singing the same note. Yeah. How are they making this sound? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I brought um, of <laughs> this ca box of castings. So there are three different types of this animal. Okay. There's the female, the alpha male, and a little guy called a sneaker male, who is way, way smaller. He's like eight times smaller. Okay. And when you dissect him, and don't worry, nobody was hurt. This was a dead animal that washed okay. up on shore. I could do a dissection. You can see all the different organs, but these fish have what's called an air bladder in the middle of their bodies. Okay. And how they make the sound is they have these large red sonic muscles on either side. And when they contract the sonic muscles, they vibrate kind of like a drum and they okay. vibrate faster and faster and then they open their mouths and the sound comes out. So it's because of these bright red muscles that they're able to do that. Now the female, you can tell is a female because of her bright yellow eggs. She has a swim bladder, but she doesn't have the sonic muscles. Okay. So she doesn't vocalize. And then this little sneaker guy also, he's got air bladder, swim bladder, but can you see sonic muscles? I do not see any sonic muscles. No. no. So the only guy who's singing is the alpha male. For this little sneaker male, he is eight times smaller than the alpha male, but his testes, relative to his body size, are nine times bigger. <laughs> so he is like a sack <laughs> of testes. Yeah, just all, all, yeah. Mm -hmm. All semen, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> to describe the males as a sack of testes, he's just, just basically traveling testicles. These morphs are so important for the success of this yeah. species from Alaska all the way down to Mexico, 
these fish will leave their super deep depths and come all the way up to the intertidal zone, which is the area of water that is right next to the shore and is in and out of uh, the tide. So what happens is the alpha males, they come in first, and their whole point is they're trying to find the perfect nest. And the perfect nest is a rock that is preferably flat on the bottom, not much space between the ground underneath, so that he can just squeeze in there and that there's no space for any predators or anything to get in. Right. And then he has the big job of grabbing all the rocks and the sharp pieces of shell and spitting them out. And so for probably weeks, he's just cleaning his nest, getting it perfect. And then he gets all ready and it's nighttime and he starts to sing. And if the female's into it, she will slide into that little hole then she'll flip upside down and she will lay her golden eggs. She sticks them onto the bottom of the rock and then she's out of there. So her job is really like get in there, lay the eggs, get out. Beat it, yeah. And then for the next, sometimes up to four months, the alpha male, he has to take care of those eggs while they're developing because the minute he leaves the nest, everybody comes in and eats them. You got crabs, you got all sorts of things. So for four months, he does not leave. And the whole time, he's working. He's blowing on his little eggs to make sure they're aerated. He's cleaning his nest. He's making sure no predators get into the nest. And he doesn't eat a thing. He is, he's a good guy. These are the good good parents. Right? I'm curious about then the, the smaller males that don't, they don't, do they have the same strategy? Do they find their little cubbies that they can are you talking Hide about the sneaker male? The sneaker males, yeah. The sneaker male was given the name because his job is to literally sneak into a nest, spray his sperm everywhere onto the eggs, yeah. and then sneak out, leaving the alpha male to raise his young. And what happens in the intertidal zone is when the tide goes out, they're completely exposed to air. Yeah, and yeah. So they're living in these highly hypoxic environments. Like no oxygen, they can't breathe. How are they staying alive? So they are breathing through their skin and their gills. And they're they can just- can breathe through their skin. I'm telling you, is this fish not amazing? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So these fish are called the plain fin midshipmen. The reason they're called that is because on the bottom of their bodies from their chin all the way down to the base of their tail, they're covered in these beautiful organs called photophores. But whoever named it thought that these photophores reminded them of the buttons on a midshipman. Like with like the brass buttons. I think it's probably a good time to admit that I don't know what a midshipman is either. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a dated term, I guess. Just somebody who works on a boat. Oh, okay, and... so it's what it sounds like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It sounds like the mutants of the, uh, the fish kingdom. They've just got all these superpowers. So even though they have all these, as you say, superpowers, yeah. they're incredibly vulnerable to predators because not only do they have to contend with predators in the ocean, when the tide goes out, they have all the predators on land and in the air. Mm. So when you go down to the beach at low tide, it's like a battlefield. You have the eagles coming down, you have the crows, yeah. you have seagulls. You have herons. I've even seen dogs trying to eat them. Like, it's just, they're there for the taking. Yeah. yeah. But they do have one trick up their sleeve that I haven't told you about. I want to try to guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> do they spray some kind of, like, acidic fluid from their mouths or something like that? Well, okay, what is it? They use their voice, again, to get rid of the predator. I'm going to play you the sound. Okay. <laughs> If you stick your hand down under a rock and you hear something go uh, like yeah, that, okay. you, will, you will whip your hand away every single time. Yeah, like, I can see it's being shocking. freaked out. Yeah. Have you heard the sound in person? Oh, yeah. I, I have done that with my hand. And like, okay. I, even though I know it's coming, like, I, I'm always like, oh, okay. scary. Yeah. But it's very effective. The most coveted spots to make your nest yeah. would be closest to the water. Right, because that's where there's the fewest predators like killing you. <laughs> exactly. You're not exposed mm -hmm. at low tide as much, less predators, it's easier. Right. So the fish who usually get those nests are the big ones. Right. So sometimes what happens is smaller male midshipmen will get into a, a really nice nest. These the aren't the sneakers. These are just smaller alphas. Smaller males. alphas, yeah. Okay. 
they'll set up in a nice nest and a bigger alpha male will come and shoo them out and take over. Wow. Yeah. If you're an alpha male who kicks out another alpha male um, and there are still egg clutches left over there, are you protecting those two? Yes. Really? Yes. So they kick a guy out of his house and then look after his kids. Isn't that the weirdest <laughs> reverse robbery going on? Yeah. He's taking on all of that. And after the course of sometimes four months, the end of the season, he's all withered up because yeah. he hasn't eaten a single thing. He's had to defend his nest. He's had to aerate his young. He's mm -hmm. had to keep it clean the whole time. Wow. It's very noble. I feel like a lot of parents can kind of <laughs> resonate. Relate to that? I feel like they're being drained <laughs> of the life of the... But, uh, but yeah, yeah, true. If you were to hold up a picture of a four-month battered midshipman and then me after I had my <laughs> twins, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> If you flip the rock, the eggs have turned in from a little M&M into an entire baby fish. And then those ones will drop off into the water and swim into an eelgrass bed nearby. Now my question is, yeah. how many eggs do you think genetically are attributable to that alpha male? You know, I'm, I'm not sure because I would think so I would, I, would th I would have thought they would have just like cleared out the other eggs. So now I have no idea, like 75% of the eggs are theirs? That's interesting. So obviously diversity is key. Yeah. So having other insemination, that is benefiting the group. The species. The species, right. yeah. Right. 50%, 52% the eggs. are attributable to that alpha male. Wow. So he is not only doing it for himself, he is doing it for his wider community. So he's not as bad a guy as I thought. If you kick somebody out, you're not a bad a guy as I thought then. <laughs> no, he's doing guy. a lot of work. A lot of wow. work on behalf of many. So these fish are truly astounding. Number one, they sing to attract yeah. females to come and mate with them. They grunt at passing predators. They have sneaker males, a different type of morph. They can live in hypoxic environments. They can breathe air. Yeah. I feel like the list can go on and on. Yeah. That is a spectacular fish. I cannot agree more. These guys are amazing. I see the beauty, and I hope other people do too. Well, here's to the mystery of the mid fish, mid shipman fish. Where was it? Plain <laughs> fin midshipman. Yeah. Plain fin midshipman. Good job, plain fin midshipman. Way to go, guys. Yeah. You really sold yourself.